Controlling a 2D platformer character can require a lot of precision, especially in tough platforming games like Celeste. So naturally, we should implement support for game pads and controllers in our platformer. In the first video when we built our sandbox, I skipped over this logic, but now is the time. Bevy, the game engine I'm using, has some basic support for controllers by default, including variable values for the analog sticks, which will allow us to scale movement speed more easily than on a keyboard press. Our gamepad support requires that we create two new systems, one to handle connections and one to handle the actual input from the controller after it's connected. The connection system is a bit awkward. We create a new struct to hold the currently active controller in a resource, and then we can read the gamepad events, which tells us when a controller is connected or disconnected. I'm not too worried about multiple controller support at the moment, because even games like Fortnite can have trouble when multiple controllers are connected, and it's just not that important yet for our sandbox. When a controller is connected, we take the first one that got connected and assign it to the player. When the game boots up, this will be one of the controllers that's connected to the computer. If that specific controller is disconnected, we update the resource to not have a controller in it. Bevy's controller support is handled via GILRS at the moment. So if a specific controller we want isn't supported, we'll have to do an upstream PR to that crate to support it. Luckily, my nice scuff controller just seems to work. So we won't have to do that yet. Our gamepad input handling system is going to be split up into two major components, analog sticks and button presses. This system runs all the time, so if we don't have a gamepad set in our resource yet, we just kind of return and avoid doing anything at all. We could potentially take advantage of IES Loopless's run conditions instead for this system and hook into the resource state, uh, but I chose not to do that yet here because this is still kind of a prototype. Next, we split the components of the analog sticks into individual X and Y components using the gamepad axis and gamepad axis type types. Having separate X and Y components will help us out later when we want to write logic for which direction the character is facing, for example, or implementing jumps. We'll implement the character direction right now, actually. Sprites and Bevy have this really nice feature that let us set a Boolean to flip them on the X axis. This makes it so easy for us to control which direction our character is facing. Signum is a function on numbers that will return us either one, negative one, or zero, depending on whether the value is positive, negative, or zero. If the signum for the X component of the left analog stick is positive, we're facing right. If it's negative, we're facing left. We take the signum information and apply it to the flip X field on the sprite, and uh, we're done. Our player now faces right when moving right and left when moving left. Because the left stick X component will be positive 0 to 1 for the right direction and negative 0 to negative 1 for the left, we can multiply that value by something and set it as our player's linear X velocity to set the player's walking speed. Of course, because this is an analog stick, we can have any value from negative one to one, which allows the player to have some measure of control over the speed based on how hard they push the stick to either side. I also dropped some animation logic in here to show off a walking animation when we're moving, but it's, it's kind of janky and not really what we're going to end up with at the end, so I'm going to skip that for this video. We can continue into programming our jump button instead using the gamepad button and gamepad button type types. When we code the jump for real, I think we're gonna take a lot more control over the application of the jump values, but for now, we're just gonna set the Y velocity to 900, which will pop our character up and let gravity take over for a nice, simple parabola arc. Our sprite's texture atlas also lets us set arbitrary indexes in our sprite sheet, so I do that here as well so that we see a jumping animation when we jump. And that's it for now. We have a basic controller control player character for our 2D platformer sandbox. Now there is a problem with this approach. Directly using controller input to affect variables in the game is fine, but this will make it hard to do anything over the internet for multiplayer scenarios, and also makes it harder to support multiple input methods. For example, the game right now only supports controllers. The Bevy ecosystem has a couple of input managers, including Leafwing, which is written by one of the Bevy maintainers, and I would like to take advantage of that as the inputs get more complicated and the move set impacts a more complicated state machine. Beyond that, there are even more sophisticated input managers, such as Rewired in the Unity ecosystem, that don't necessarily have colleagues in the Bevy ecosystem yet. Maybe I'll be the one to write them, or maybe what exists will be enough for me for now. I guess we'll find out next time.